what is up everyone welcome to the channel today we have a new addition to the shop something that i have been anxiously awaiting and today it arrived so time to uncrate and reveal what is in this big old box Can you guess what it is? Hmm, I wonder. I wonder what it could be. Well, if you can't guess, I'll go ahead and tell you. Well, maybe not, I'll wait. <laughs> Some of you mechanical people out there will know what it is. So I'm not real sure what this stuff is, but it is literally coated in this cosmoline or something. It's, it's on there and it's quite a bit of it I mean it's all over it I mean I get it it's just to protect it but I mean wow that's like a lot <laughs> and it keeps it from rusting and all of that but jeez that's a lot and it's literally dripping off So, this is what I've been working with to change tires, which is a decent system. It's a Nomar, they guarantee not to scratch wheels and so forth. Been a pretty good system for personal use. Uh, it's been a really good machine. However, when you've got uh, about three or four sets of tires sitting here to do, it can get to be a pain in the butt so bingo we have the weaver 807 pneumatic tire changer i am so happy to have this it has been crazy trying to change these tires and a lot of times it's at last minute somebody gets a flat uh, they need an emergency tire change I'm always the guy to come to and take care of that kind of stuff. It, I mean, it, it, I'll do what I can, you know. But that is way more difficult than this is going to be. I mean, obviously, I have a bike lift. Uh, I have all the tools. Big air compressor sitting over there in the corner. I have a static balancer to balance tires. And then I've got this. This really is just isn't cutting it right now. I mean, it's good for personal use. You know, it does a great job. It doesn't scratch anything, but it's time to step it up a notch, which is here. Now we have to move this out and put that in, but we have to finish putting it together first. So stay tuned. Before we put this over there, we need to clean it up from all the little bugs that crawled up underneath that little platform I made and decided to make their home and the little spiders came and ate him. <laughs> A box of goodies. Tire changer users or users manual. User. Tron fans will get that. This is the bolt 
that adjusts the big giant arm, which is also covered in a bunch of goopy stuff. They like that stuff, I tell you. All the little protective things that go on the tire changer to protect the wheels from being scratched. Stop blowing around. We have the inflation hose. We have the rag, looks like, to uh, wet the rim. Call it a snot rag. That'll work. These are the actual arms that bolt to the machine. So we'll just leave those right there because that's where they're going to go anyway. The spring that goes into the arm. Yay. Slobber bucket. Lid for said slobber bucket. This is the duck head unit that goes on to the machine. To hold the slobber bucket. And one tire tool. Now, we need to take all these pieces and add them to the machine. Not a real complicated project. However, the one thing that does uh, intrigue me is that nowhere in the videos did it show a plug-in, which is fine. I have plenty of plug-ins around here, but I'm curious as to what that does. Maybe that operates the motor, a different motor in there of some sorts. Uh, from what I understand, this is an all pneumatic system. This is pneumatic, everything's pneumatic. So, not sure about that one, but I guess we'll find out because in the video it does say you have to take these nuts off all four sides, reach in there and connect the air lines that make everything run. So, let's find out. Now that we have the arm on there, got the bolts just basically snugged up for this time being. Next step, let's put the spring in the arm. One thing I really like about this machine when I was researching the which one to get was on the duck head, it has these protective items here to protect the wheel from being scratched. And those are replaceable as well. So that was one of the things I really liked about it. So one thing that I take pride in is my work. If I'm gonna work on someone's bike, I'm gonna make sure that it's done correctly. I also don't want to scratch the bike either, or the wheel, or whatever case may, that may be. If I'm putting a clutch in someone's bike, like I did just recently, and we had a problem with the clutch not working, you let out the clutch and nothing happened. So it turned out to be that they gave him the wrong parts. I was very thorough with that. I didn't just throw it in there and say, here you go. Naturally, you need to make sure things work when you get done working on something. This is going to be wonderful addition to the shop. I'm very excited to have this in the shop. So next, we're gonna put the extremely goopy big screw in the hole. It's got lots of lubrication on it. Oh yeah, there you go, babe. Everything's better with lube. Now, we need to loosen this up so it can actually pivot because they lock it down during shipping. So now that we got this loosened up, as you can see, this now pivots and it doesn't take much of oh, just a little bit of loosening that nut right there. So when you turn this, obviously it's going to turn the whole arm on to the next. So this is the inflation tool. And I just unwrapped it. And according to the instructions, this is supposed to slide into said slot here. And apparently that just screws tightly. There you have it. Inflation tool is now in according to the destructions and yes i called them destructions really we just need to add air and plug it in so there you have it now we're going to plug it in and put some air in it see how she works so here's a problem we ran into this is the air hose connection that was in this block here 
that does not match up to my air hose. So I found a spare one, screws into that, that matches my air hose. However, if for some reason that starts leaking, I'll have to go and find the one that actually matches up to this. And I'm gonna be running a different, or a dedicated air hose to this anyway. If for some reason we start getting a little bit of seepage out of this, it leaks, or if I hear some hissing, uh, we're gonna have to go ahead and go back to this, which is fine, no problem. But we put some seal tape on the threads and uh, we should be good to go. There you have it. Everything seems to be in working order. The bead breaker, and for those of you who have ever changed a motorcycle tire and tried to uh, break the bead on a tire, you know how hard that is. Now granted, the old machine sitting out there, that one did a pretty good job, although still you had to muscle it, you know, because I mean, it relies on human power. <laughs> so this one, however, when you put the, t the wheel in and step on it, and just like that, it takes care of it. Then put the wheel in here, step on it, clamps up against the wheel. It has the protective covers so it doesn't scratch the rim, which is good. When you're done, take it out. And I was curious about the electrical part of it because that didn't really show in the video that uh, they had before, which is fine. The electric part is the actual turning of the wheel itself. Very simple. I can't wait to get a wheel in here and try this out. So uh, you never know. It may be on the R1. Although I still have a decent amount of meat left on the back end of this, even though I have been peeling it up slightly, but that's okay. If you're interested in one of these, go see DerekWeaver.com and you can buy one for your, uh, for your garage. They're not cheap. It was about 1100 bucks, but man, 1100 bucks well spent in my opinion, especially if you're doing what I'm doing and you, have, you find yourself changing quite a bit of tires during the weekend. So if you are interested in one of these, go see DerekWeaver.com. Until then, thanks for watching. Click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that little bell next to it. That way you get notifications of all my videos. See you next time on Ride with JT.